I'm Katerina Stamoulis. So I'm a computational neuroscientist, which gives me a great opportunity to study various aspects of the brain. So I collaborate with experimentalists and we're looking to understand how functional networks develop in the brain during the course of a long period of human development, how the brain responds to the wealth of uh, stimuli from the natural world, how the brain performs multiple cognitive uh, tasks at the same time, uh, and to do that in a very quantitative way using uh, large data sets of primarily electrophysiological data and uh, mostly from the human brain. This has been a wonderful opportunity. This is the fourth year that we come to these meetings um, and it's a wonderful opportunity for us to see what is supported by the Brain Initiative um, an initiative that has provided an enormous opportunity, not just for my laboratory, but for others as well, to develop technologies, tools, to really take the investigation of the brain to a completely new level and facilitate um, research and the generation of data with tools that will provide us um, insights into the brain at exquisite resolutions. So I have two brain projects, both of them are supported by the National Science Foundation. So the first project, which started about four years ago, is going and is still going on, it uses a very large data set of uh, human electrophysiological recordings from infants with the goal to understand fundamental aspects of brain activity and how that, those aspects develop over the course of uh, the first three years of life, a critical period in our life during which um, our brains become a lot more specialized than at birth. They acquire in increasingly cog uh, more specialized cognitive skills. They can perform more complex behaviors. They, the brain changes in profound ways during those periods. And today, we don't have a complete understanding of how, those, how these changes are manifested at the level of the neural circuitry. How do brain networks change? Whether it is not networks that are active at rest, or whether these are networks that are active in response to specific functions. The second project addresses a very pressing problem in, in the neuroscience field, and a, a problem that is particularly important in, in view of the technologies that are being generated and emerging from the brain, the, from the brain initiative, the problem of data. So because these technologies are going to be able to sample the brain and measure brain activity at the exquisite resolutions, that means that they're also going to generate an enormous amount of data. We are not yet well equipped to address the computational challenges of this data. So a few years ago, part of the Brain Initiative became more focused into the development of platforms and tools to be able to address the, uh, the pressing issue of big neuroscience data. And we were fortunate to get funded by the NSF to develop a platform in collaboration with our research computing over at Harvard Medical School that will allow us to study very to study the brain using very very large data sets so massive processing of brain data that will also facilitate a, an investigation that is generalizable in, in the brain right for when for large cohorts of uh, of participants from um, uh, during the execution of multiple tasks in naturalistic settings so that platform once ready is going to be at the forefront of next generation research. It has implications also for human health. We have a very incomplete understanding of various uh, neurodevelopmental disorders, but before we go and study these disorders, we need a very robust blueprint of what is normal, what is, what is typical development, how does that manifest in terms of the neural circuitry of the brain. Once we have quantified and characterized that neural circuitry very carefully, then we can go and study any other disorder that could impact that circuitry. But we just need that blueprint first.